Today in the bunker, we're going to build a water storage tank. So one of the first missions in Fallout Wasteland Warfare uh, is one to take water from the water treatment plant or storage plant. Um, so I'm going to build, I had this container, and this is a shaker for Parmesan cheese. And I got to looking at it once I took the label off, and I'm like, wow, what a fantastic tank that would be. And I found some of this round granny grating that I had. And I took a lid off of an old dead GW paint pot, or Citadel paint pot. Um, got some plastic ladder stuff. And this bunch of straw connector things is really what I bought it for. This was like three bucks on clearance. Um, I got this a few months ago at the, one of my local stores. If you don't have that, it's no big deal. Um, there are pieces you could 3D print or you can just fake it with the flexi straws. Not a, not a big deal. Also, we'll probably use um, some little, for the valves, I will use the sew-on snaps, but we'll get to that point because I don't have them out on the table right now. So let's get this ready. I think what I'm going to do is rough it up with a little bit of sandpaper so that the paint will stick better to it. I should fill this up with expanding foam and make it completely bulletproof, but I just don't have time to go get that. So we're going to run with it as is. All right, so there it is roughed up with some sandpaper. I used 400 grit. You could just use whatever you got. And uh, that hazed it nicely. It gave it some tooth for the paint to stick to. If you did not have some spray paint you wanted to use, you could use Mod Podge and black paint as a primer. And that should stick to that wonderfully. And I'm also going to, later on, uh, hot glue these closed so that when we glue it down to the base it doesn't come apart and try to open. So, Alright, we'll uh, get this ready for priming and be right back. Because I like to do things out of order completely, I'm going to try and not do that. Uh, also going to cut a circle of this drink carton out so that we can hot glue that up there. Not super critical, the fit of that, as long as you kind of close that in because we're going to put that grating on top of it and then we're going to put an excess tank or hatch there so we're going to just cut that out and glue that on before we prime it all right so just uh lay the tank down kind of trace around it not super duper science and then get your trusty shears out of your pile of tools with everything avalanching. And then we'll just kind of cut that out. And I'm going to go inside the line slightly. Alright, so just cut that out as best you can. And then we'll get ready to glue that on there. All right, that's not a not a bad fit. A little hot glue on there and some paint and everything. We're going to distress it enough. Uh, plus the grating on top, you won't really notice it. So we'll heat up the old glue gun and uh, get ready for that part. I guess I should note this is actually a new glue gun. I had to go get one with a deployable bipod because the other one I was using, old GUI, was that was permanently down, so you couldn't get into really really tight spots the way this one will. So try to get yourself the best glue gun you can and that's one of the features you're going to want. While that's heating up I'm going to trim off the outer ring of this granny grating and also enough of the inner to fit the hatch in. So we're going to cut that and we'll be right back. So once you've trimmed all that you end up with that outer piece which may or may not come in handy for something. This inner piece, which definitely will come in handy for something, maybe not on this project, um, and then the walkway that'll be at the top. And that fits that lid right there. And these old Citadel paint pot lids, the, the paint pods, I'll go on record as saying that those pots are dreadful. They're horrible. The paint's great, but the, the pots are dreadful. However, now there's a good use for them. So we'll uh, see if our glue gun is it is ready so we'll get ready and start gluing this on put ourselves a nice bead of glue a 
on there. And get that on there. Burn the mess out of yourself. There you go. Yeah. Thankfully, it's not a high temp gun. Kind of neaten that up. Alright, now granny grading is kind of problematic. Um, there's never any really good way to put this stuff on, so I'm just going to kind of put some glue on. We're going to hope for the best. And you end up with it, it kind of comes through the, the grates. It never really looks as neat as it, it ought to. But, it's just too handy not to use it. Right, so we'll do the same thing with our lid. get that in there fairly centered all right knock our glue gun over again and oh I need to glue the lids Just put a little probably doesn't take a whole lot there just enough to give it some kind of a bond and we'll knock that down All right, so we will kind of neaten that up a little bit. We're going to take, we're going to make some, a piece of ladder that is going to go on here and some piping. So I'm going to gather those bits and then we will prime them and come back and start assembling this. One minor concerning bit is these are actually a rubber material. I didn't realize that. I thought this was a hard plastic. So we're going to see. This may or may not work the way we want it to. But we will endeavor to persevere. Also, because I like to skip steps, I neglected to mention that I'm going to have to cut a base out for this because these pieces are not going to stay on here if I just leave them loose. This really needs to be based so that both ends of these pipes can be glued down and be fairly secure. And that'll, that should keep them where we want them. So let me make a base and we'll get that all ready. And I cut out a somewhat irregular base. I try to do them in kind of an organic shape uh, for all these fallout projects. Uh, I'm going to treat, this is mat board, you could use chipboard, whatever you got. I'm going to treat this both sides with sanding sealer so that it will make it more of a, it will sound almost plastic once we get done. It will make it impervious to moisture and it will really help prevent it from warping. So we'll get that treated and we'll be back. Right, so that's been painted on both sides with the sanding sealer. It's a lot more plasticky. We let that dry for a good half hour. And uh, it's nice and firm. A little still slightly tacky, but not enough to affect anything we're going to do. So, we're going to take our various bits and we're going to glue them on here with some hot glue. So we're going to lay... Well, first we're going to adjust our lighting a little bit. And get our bipod out of the way. And we'll put a good good bead on there. Right, 
if you lay that in there, and we'll cover up around there with our basing materials. So if you get a little excess, that's fine. Right, so have our intake pipe. I guess we'll do this where you can see it maybe. least we're gonna have our outflow pipe and I'm gonna complete and utter mess right there with the hot glue. So we'll scrape most of that off. As always, my channel is more of a cautionary tale than anything else. There we go. But it's nothing we can't fix with a little texturing and some paint. Not a big deal. And I found our sew on snaps. Oops, let's upright that. And the brand really doesn't matter. Just find some that are the right size and they come apart and you can actually kind of get two valve handles out of out of one snap. So we will uh, we'll work with those in a minute. All right. But in the meantime, I'm going to let that set up for a moment and then we'll put on our valves. Right, so what I've done is taken a little bit of floral wire, which is that cloth wrap wire, but you can use any kind of wire you got and super glued it kind of as a stem to that snap. And what we're gonna do is drill a hole with our pin vise, and we're gonna glue those in place, and I did one for, for each. So we will go ahead and do that. And if you don't have a pin vise, a lot of times you can get, you can just do it by hand with a drill bit. This is just a little more controllable. I'm just going to add a little bit of super glue right there just to kind of hold it. And then we'll do the same thing over here. These plastic straws aren't the best things to be working with if for something like this, but they will work. I probably need to cut that stem down a little bit. that dry and I'm also going to in the meantime uh, take and some Mod Podge mixed with black paint and I'm going to paint these rubbery bits just to give them just an extra bit this is flexible enough it should help that in case for some reason it does flex maybe the paint won't just fly off and then we will uh, glue on some texture so we'll be back for that all right, so I've got that applied to the rubbery bits. I also put it on the straw and I stippled it because that'll give it a nice texture uh, for a rusty finish later. Um, I also applied it in patches on the tank itself and then went ahead and coated the granny grating with it because that stuff is um, hard to paint otherwise and get things to stick to. The, the Mod Podge will kind of coat it and uh, give a, a good base for some paint. And I went ahead and stippled the um, access hatch as well. So we're going to let that dry and I'm going to, in the meantime, apply my usual basing sand mix with some PVA. 
and then we'll be ready to prime it and we'll be back. So we've got the sand on there and I got a little bit happy with it and it got up on the Mod Podge um, but it kind of works there. It's going to give it a really grainy, rusty texture, which is perfect right where it's at. So I just left it. Um, it was kind of a happy accident. So, And the rest of this, same thing where it's around the bottom. It's kind of up on it. That'll just be extra grainy rust. So not a real problem there. So I'm going to let that set up, and then we will get ready and give this a base coat. So we'll be back. Right, so we used our normal... Uh, red oxide primer as a base and that really kind of helped pull everything together um, This is still drying a little bit uh, Put several coats on it. So hopefully that'll have really good adhesion and the places where I stippled on The uh, Mod Podge aren't quite as evident as I thought they might be but I can still make them out So that's fine. We can work with that. So we're gonna let that dry a little bit and then we'll start putting some paint on this and uh, see what we get. All right, so that's dried pretty well. Uh, we're gonna start with some burnt umber and I'm gonna apply that to those spots where there was some supposed to be heavy rust. So we will take a brush and I'll be right back. I gotta find the brush. All right, um, as you can see maybe, uh, I've rearranged the desk. So all of my brushes were in a container that was not readily obvious to me, despite the fact that I put them there. I'm really not very bright. But anyway, we're going to take some of the burnt umber, and we're just going to kind of stipple that on in that area, or the areas where we had stippled on the uh, the Mod Podge. And there's no real exact science to it, just kind of do it to, so it looks like how you want it to look. It may be helpful to go out on the interwebs and look at different photos of actual rusted things or you know gasp go out into the real world and look at them and we'll just kind of apply that generously wherever we think we need to Do some more of that and we'll be right back. Got that applied uh, various areas especially where any water would be leaking we wanted to and a little bit around the top access too. So next we're going to add a color and in this case blue because this is supposed to be for water and also I like blue for industrial things uh, because I'm very strange that way and I'm gonna knock the camera. So let me get a sponge, and I'll be back. Right, so, now that we've got that open, let's actually get some blue paint. I'm just going to use this neat with the sponge. And I like the sponge because it's very forgiving. So just kind of apply that and it gives a very um, kind of a chipped effect right from the get-go very weathered you can kind of run it up to those areas we did and if you get on the ground no big deal we're gonna we're gonna do the that's why we do the ground last so And you'll see it kind of goes on in layers and uh, gives it kind of a, a texture as well, which is really nice. All right, so we'll put that on and be back. All right, so there's the main color sponged on. I went back and sponged on some of the burnt umber just to add to that effect. And we'll 
add a little more with some water-based oils and whatnot just to kind of get a really leaky look but um, next we're going to pick out I think the pipes and everything we're going to do in kind of a sort of a dark gunmetal color um, as an accent they'll mainly be rusty but we'll add some uh, metallic goodness to them so we'll be right back I'm just mixing about a 50-50 of just silver and black so nothing really super fancy uh, I'm going to use a smaller brush just a dab of water we'll mix that up that doesn't take much kind of add that on there just to really sell the idea that that's you know a piece of iron pipe that comes out of there and we'll add some rust back on top of that all right so we'll do that and be right back all right so now that we've got that kind of dark iron color applied I'm going to go back and add some more of the burnt umber that I should have waited to add in the first place, but I have a bad tendency to do things out of order. So, again, a cautionary tale. All right, so we'll apply that and we'll be back. All right, so all right, that's our dark part of the rust. We're gonna add some nutmeg brown and kind of build that up in layers. Um, it's older rust, so I don't know if I'm going to put any bright orange highlights on it, but I think uh, a little bit of this will probably really help that rust pop. So we'll be right back. And we're going to primarily put that on by sponging. And we'll kind of just build up light layers on top of the burnt umber that we've already put on there. can kind of knock it back a little bit with the sponge if it's too much. Alright, so we'll continue on with that. And in typical hacksaw fashion, I just realized I left the ladder off. I didn't even prime it. So I will take the time to go prime that so we can glue it. We'll have to zip it on with some super glue, I guess. Um, so we'll be back. Okay, that's not bad. It's a good start. I want to add just a little more to it so I'm going to use some of this raw sienna you could just take the uh, the nutmeg brown and add a little bit of orange to it if you didn't have any of that um, and that would make a suitable color so this is a water mixable oil and uh, I like working with these just they're kind of interesting Thin that out a little bit. And then we'll just take some of that and kind of add that. Again, just something else to sort of give the effect of layering. I probably should have sponged that on, but anyway, we'll apply some more of that and we'll be back. All right, so I ended up uh, applying it a little heavier in some spots and then you kind of stipple it on and then go back and kind of touch it up with the sponge a little bit, sort of knock it back, and that gives it that, that texture. I don't know how well that shows up on camera, but it's got a very grainy look to it that is uh, 
really what you're going for when you're trying to do rusty things. All right, so we'll finish up a little more of that and we'll be right back. All right, so I think that gives a pretty good effect, um, that rusty layers coming out, especially when you have the kind of streaks and all that. So we're gonna let that dry a little bit and then we're gonna start on the ground cover. For the spots where I managed to slop the uh, blue color on the ground, I blew it on the ground, I don't know. I'm gonna just take some burnt umber and just kind of cover that up. And that's fine, that'll kind of give you some shading and extra layering on your ground cover as well. There's nothing wrong with that. All right, so we'll continue that. All right, and then for the next color, we're gonna take some of that uh, nutmeg and we're gonna kind of damp brush and sort of make that pop. And then we're gonna do, after that, we'll do some tan and we'll follow it up with a highlight of maple sugar tan. So we'll be back. All right, so with those different layers on there, that really makes that ground pop. Um, of course, use any colors that fit your table and your other scenics. Um, I do it this way so that all of my post-apocalyptic slash fallout stuff kind of matches and matches the ground cloth pretty well. So, all right, so we're going to add, well, we're going to add that ladder I forgot. And then we're going to add some grass and some tufts. But because this has water kind of seeping out a little bit, I'm going to add some actual green to this, whereas the rest of my... Uh, bases all get kind of a dead grass look. So this will have a little bit of life to it. So we'll be right back. All right, so I went ahead and spray painted that ladder the same red oxide primer. And then I hit it with that mix of black and silver just to kind of give it sort of a rusty metal look. And then just zap some super glue on it and slapped it up there. And of course I got it on there crooked, but eh, whatever, we're gonna go with it. So we're going to add some green grass and then around the edges some of our usual dead grass and likewise some of our tufts we'll do some green and some kind of dead ones so we'll get that set up i just put down some pva where i want the grass i don't have one of the really fancy applicators and then we just take some large tweezers or you could use your fingers, whatever you got. And just kind of press that down into that glue. It's probably a bad angle. And ideally, if you had some darker green and some lighter green and you mix them, it makes the grass look much more realistic. But this is the only green grass I have on hand at the moment, so we'll have to run with what we got. That's okay, it'll look good. And you just press that down into that PVA. And the reason I do it over a plate is so that I can do this and you can kind of catch that excess and reapply it where it needs to be reapplied or if it doesn't need to be reapplied you can just put it back in the container Alright, so we'll keep on that and we'll be back. One of the things I neglected to mention, the water-based oils, one of the, the nature of them means that they don't dry very fast and I didn't take that into account. So now I have grass stuck in there, but that's fine. Um, we'll pick that off as we go and we'll paint over it if we need to. It's not the end of the world. Just try to be smarter than I am. It's, it's not hard. Okay, so there's a little bit of the deader grass, deader, uh, around the edges to kind of tie it in with the rest of the board. 
And now we're going to add some tufts. We're going to do that pretty much the same way. I'm going to, I'm going to use these swamp ones because they're very green. And do the same thing. You just put down a drop of glue. Grab the tuft you desire and put it into the drop of glue and hope that it stays. There we go. Okay. And you start doing that around, it really adds some actual kind of life to the piece. So we're going to do that and we'll be back. It is with the grass and the tufts added. I also uh, used a sponge and some stencils and just added some markings to it. Uh, totally optional. Uh, or you can hand paint that stuff on there. Um, this could probably stand to have some graffiti on it, but I'm not brave enough to, to put it on there yet, so we'll see. Uh, maybe after some things happen, uh, whoever wins a battle, they can, they can mark it, tag it as their territory. But I also uh, went back and the little valve handles I touched uh, up a little bit with some red just to kind of make them pop a little bit. So uh, yeah, that's it. That's pretty straightforward build. Um, it should look really good on the table. Like I said, if you made your basing match everything, then you're golden. As always guys, if you want to see more of this content, be sure to like and subscribe. Hit the little bell, all those good things they tell us to tell you. But in the meantime, I hope you guys have a great day, and thanks so much for watching.